You're watching Natural Lessons with naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. Hope you enjoy the show. And most of all, remember to go out and explore your Marion County Parks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Natural Lessons with naturalist James Anderson from the Marion County Park District. We are on episode two, and we're going to be talking about misfortune wildlife in Ohio. So when you hear the word endangered species, you tend to think of animals like tigers and pandas and rhinos, elephants, snow leopards, wildlife like that. And don't get me wrong, it's important to care about wildlife around the world, but I'm hoping after today's lesson, you'll learn that there could be some endangered species in your own backyard that needs protection as well. So today's lesson is geared towards life science for elementary students and environmental science for high school students. So what we will be learning in this episode, uh, we're going to be defining uh, population level categories like endangered species, threatened species, extirpated species, and uh, some other different terminology as well. We're also going to be learning things like what causes an organism to become endangered, history of the Endangered Species Act, so a little history lesson, and some examples of endangered species that we have in Marion County. All right. So now we're going to get into the terminology aspect of this lesson, and I will admit there's definitely going to be a little bit more terms um, than the last episode, uh, but they're definitely going to be important. Uh, now, just please keep in mind some of this terminology, um, a lot of textbooks don't use. Um, I'm actually using the resource that's coming from the Ohio Division of Wildlife, and this is their definition. Uh, sometimes it matches with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but sometimes different states and even different countries have different definitions of what an endangered species or the different terminology we're going to talk about. But just keep in mind, this lesson just goes for Ohio, and I'm just going to be uh, reading right off the slide. So the first one is probably what you've heard most often, an endangered species. So what is it? What does it mean to be an endangered species? So it's basically an organism, a plant or an animal that is seriously at risk of extinction. And we'll talk a little bit later on about what that term means, extinct. So this is definitely a new terminology. Uh, it's probably been around the last decade or so, I would say. Uh, they really didn't hit this hard when I was in school. Uh, but uh, I, I've noticed that they're really trying to reinforce this in school. So I, I, I really appreciate having different kind of population level uh, categories. So first one is species as considered special interests. And the Division of Wildlife's definition is a species that occurs predilogically and is capable of breeding in Ohio. So these species have no federal endangered or threatened status. So that means they're basically not really protected. And uh, the other uh, definition go along with it. it, with the exception of efforts to conserve occupied areas, minimal management efforts will be directed for these species. So it's basically where they're able to grab the piece of land and protect their habitats. So the next one is called species of concern. So this is a species or a subspecies which might become threatened in Ohio under continued or increased stress. So if it's habitat destruction, poaching, uh, there are a lot of different factors that cause this as well. Um, so we definitely don't want to see that. But uh, to go along with it, this category may contain species designated as fur bearers or game species but whose statewide population is dependent on the quality or the quantity of habitat and is not ad adversely impacted by regulated harvest. Bob White quail is a great example of that. Um, that yes, they're still considered a species of concern, but they are legally allowed to be hunted in the state of Ohio, 
uh, very selective counties. Uh, there's only certain bag limits, a season. Um, and, you know, throughout Ohio history, Bob White Quail have kind of gone on and off of the um, songbird hunting list. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about that in, a, in another video. So this is probably another word you probably heard most uh, likely as well, uh, a threatened species. So this is a, uh, an organism whose survival in Ohio is not immediate jeopardy, but to which a threat exists, continual or increased stress will result in becoming endangered. So basically that, hey, your numbers are not really looking good. Um, so trumpeter swans, barn owls are a really, really great example of that. And I know it's kind of uh, funny, especially in Marion County, you know, you really want to think of uh, trumpeter swans, especially if you're on the west side of the county around Big On Wildlife Area. Uh, you come out to Marion Tallgrass Trail, you see a lot, a lot of trumpeter swans during the winter season. But, you know, there's only very few pockets of trumpeter swan populations throughout the state. We're just very fortunate that we have a, a good abundant of trumpeter swans in our county. Uh, some of our neighboring counties don't even have uh, an abundant population. So, and then endangered. So we kind of give the overall world view of an endangered species, but uh, but this is the Division of Wildlife's uh, perspective is uh, it's a native species or subspecies threatened with an uh, extirpation from the state of Ohio. Uh, so Allegheny wood rats, eastern hellbenders, uh, those would be uh, a great example of an endangered species in Ohio. So here is uh, one word you probably heard of and another word you probably haven't. So extirpated versus extinction. So you've heard of extinction or, or extinct. It means that they're gone on planet Earth forever. So you cannot find their species at all. Now, I know there have been some river reports of some extinct species that they thought were extinct, but they have uh, rediscovered them. But, uh, but overall, we just we cannot find this organism uh, for a period of time. So extirpated, so this is kind of a new terminology that they kind of you know, have thrown out in the last decade or more. Uh, it basically means local extinction. So for example, we got wolves. Uh, wolves were very, very common in the state of Ohio. Uh, but when man moved into the state, we changed the landscape. We got rid of a lot of their natural food, deer, elk, uh, a lot of other species. And also, too, because uh, wolves were predatory animals, we didn't like them. So we said, hey, you don't belong in Ohio. Let's kick you out. Well, luckily, their populations were uh, still existing in other parts of the world. So, yes, we don't have any more Ohio wolves, you could say, but at least there are other uh, wolf species across uh, the United States or across the world. So again, extirpated, it basically means, again, local extinction. All right, now that we got some of the terminology out of the way, I just want to give some examples of some of the extinct and extirpated animals of the state of Ohio. So the first uh, list I want to kind of show you is the uh, organisms that became extinct in Ohio. So these are the organisms that the very last specimen died or was last seen was in Ohio. So we had two birds, the passenger pigeon and the Carolina parakeet. Now one thing to note about the passenger pigeon, uh, this was a bird that had many, many records of having the flocks by the millions, it was reported. They said it was almost like a freight train, that there were so many of them, it took a while for people to pass or get around the giant flock. So what happened to them? Well, as people came into Ohio, destroying habitats, also too, we uh, there were a lot of laws back then, so we could just go out any day of the year, kill as much wildlife as we want, um, especially when a lot of the European immigrants were coming into uh, the United States or the state of Ohio. Uh, they would eat what was called squab, which is the basically the baby that's still inside the egg. It's a, it's a delicacy, even currently in a lot of the countries in Europe and across the world. 
and this really causes population to decline and unfortunately uh, the very last one uh, died at the Cincinnati Sioux in the early 1900s. So a couple of our fish species, uh, we got the blue pike up in Lake Erie that was last seen up there and the hair lip sucker. Uh, we had one insect, uh, Kramer's cave beetle. And I'm not gonna list all of these uh, mollusk, but uh, mollusk or mussels really, really were impacted uh, when people moved in because uh, some of the old fashioned buttons were made out of uh, the mussel shells or mollusk shells. Um, also too, when we were polluting a lot of their uh, natural streams, creeks, rivers, that probably definitely didn't help um, a lot of these species to survive. So it's pretty sad that this list that you're seeing is all the organisms that again, were last seen um, in the state of Ohio and nowhere else in the world. So here are some of the uh, mammals that were extirpated from Ohio. So uh, a lot of people don't realize we used to have bison, um, which is a uh, fun fact, well, it's kind of fun, sun, sad fun fact that the last one was killed in 1803. Uh, that was the year we also became a state. Uh, the last one was killed in Lawrence County, which is most of the southern tip of Ohio. Uh, then we used to have things like wolverines and mountain lions and martens and fishers and porcupines. And we mentioned about wolves. And there are a lot of other animals as well that were extirpated. But this is just a small list of just the mammals that we lost throughout Ohio history. And we'll definitely be talking about that in another future video. So here's just also a, another list, uh, but it's uh, showing mammals, mollusks, birds, fish, uh, butterflies. Um, as you can see, uh, we definitely lost a lot of mollusks, just like the extinction list. Uh, so we definitely were not very kind to our wildlife in the state of Ohio. So a few slides ago, we talked about the different terminology of the population level categories. So now this is going to show a pyramid kind of scheme of, uh, of what we just talked about. So this will show from, okay, your population's doing okay, but we should keep an eye on it to, hey, something's really going on with your population to, okay, uh, you could become extinct to, oh, now you're extinct. So hopefully this pyramid will kind of explain uh, all that terminology we talked about earlier. And this is going to be my just interpretation uh, or my definition with this uh, with this slide. So species of interest, uh, again, while we kind of talked about this, is saying, okay, your numbers are doing fine. They've been kind of down, but hey, you're you're doing great. Species of concern, all right, your your population is really not doing the best, but overall your numbers aren't uh, down significantly. Uh, let's let's still keep an eye on you. And then unfortunately, if that organism, it, their population keeps getting stressed, then they're going to be considered threatened. Then they're like, okay, something's wrong with your population. Now you get some type of protection. So this can be from the state to federal. Uh, just like we talked earlier that different countries have different uh, ways of handling endangered species. Some countries like here in the United States, we, we do a pretty decent job. Uh, but unfortunately, other countries uh, are not really able to uh, do as, as good a job as the United States on protecting some of their animals. So then we get into a danger and then we're like, OK, then there's really, really something wrong. And if we really don't do anything, then your population could be gone either from the area or from planet Earth. And then we talked about extirpated. So luckily the species is they're they're existing in other parts of the world, but unfortunately they are kicked out of their original location. So again, Ohio was a uh, with the bison in Ohio is a great example of that. And then unfortunately, in a lot of cases, we have extinct or extinction. Okay. So again, as as you go up the pyramid, uh, the the population. Uh, level category category just gets worse and worse and worse. So we're we're hoping that animals will always keep uh, below the endangered level um, or even threatened leveled. But uh, unfortunately, it seems 
as time progresses on, uh, a lot of our wildlife implants get put on the endangered species list. So you might be wondering, well, what does Ohio look like when it comes to the endangered species? So this came off the Ohio Division of Wildlife off of their website. And at the end of the presentation, I will be given a link if you want to find out more information of the current endangered, threatened species of concern, species of interest, extirpated and extinct organisms in the state of Ohio. So uh, currently we have about 122 endangered species, and then we have 53 that are considered threatened, 110 that are considered species of concern, 53 species that are considered species of interest, 36 that are that were extirpated from the state of Ohio, which we saw that one less uh, earlier, and then 11 that became extinct, which we talked about earlier as well. So now we're going to be talking about why is an organism considered endangered? Another way you can ask yourself this question is, why is one species considered endangered and another species is not? Well, one of the big things, a reason why an, or an organism can be considered endangered is they are not adaptable to change. Uh, Charles Darwin once said that it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. So this kind of goes along with, with that question again, why, why is uh, one species uh, able to be adaptable and the other not? So we have a black bear, which is uh, starting to increase in the state of Ohio. And then we have Canada geese, so which are very, very common in the state. So both of these species, all right, they live in different kinds of environments. But if you think about it, bears typically like forested areas. Now, yes, I know bears have started to kind of creep in into a human territory because uh, they're trying to adapt to change. But you have to remember there are just some species that just will not touch any man-made areas, no urban server, urban areas. Um, Canada geese, you know, we can find them in fields. We can find them in ponds, lakes, wetlands. And then we can find them in front of those little, uh, little subdivision ponds that you usually find around housing development. So these guys can be very, very adaptable and natural and man-made environments. So for uh, diets, uh, you know, black bears are primarily just eats plants and animals, just things outside, out in nature, the way it's supposed to be. So yes, Canada geese are the same way, but uh, one of the th things I have here in this bullet point is they like human food. So yes, I know bears are like human food as well, but there are just some animals that are just not very, uh, it can't handle uh, human food as very well as other species of, of wildlife. Uh, but this is probably one of the big reasons why that uh, in danger, bears are really considered endangered is since they're a bigger animal, they do require a huge, huge home range um, but versus geese, I mean, they just need a couple acre little pond with some little grassy patches and to raise their young, find some food, and they're able to uh, be content versus bears need a lot more uh, requirements. Uh, but another uh, big reason why black bears are uh, considered in danger is their breeding cycle is just very, very slow. Uh, a lot of times bears breed every other year versus Canada geese typically have one uh, one a batch of goslings, but uh, sometimes they can have multiple uh, kinds. Some other species are like that. They can have multiple uh, young and throughout a year. So it means their populations can grow uh, dramatically in a short period of time. So uh, these are just, again, some reasons why uh, how one animal can be really considered endangered and how another like the Canada geese uh, is just very, very common throughout the state of Ohio or Marion County. 
So again, back to the question uh, we talked about again, uh, not adaptable to change. But one of the big things is uh, uh, that makes an animal and could be endangered species is they are too picky, uh, picky on food and habitat shelter. So let's talk about food. As you see in this picture, you got this panda bear. Well, what do pandas eat? They eat bamboo. That's great and everything. But if you have human influences, people trying to come through, cut down the bamboo, you got invasive species taking over and destroying the bamboo. If a disease or a invasive insect that comes through and eats or destroys all the bamboo resources and the panda doesn't want to eat anything else, well, the panda's kind of out of luck. So uh, being a very picky eater is not very, very good. Um, that's why, the, again, uh, the animals that adapt so well are, again, like uh, raccoons and coyotes. And, and we're even starting to get notice about bears um, are starting to get adaptable to human environments or human uh, food sources. Um, and then this next picture you're seeing is a uh, Kirtland's warbler. And uh, they are very, very picky when it comes to their uh, habitats, especially during the nesting season. Uh, they only like to nest in young jack pine. Uh, now, jack pine is not a very common species of pine in the state of Ohio, uh, mainly common in northwest, uh, northwestern Ohio, um, up in Michigan. Um, that's also another good spot to, to find young jack pine. But jack pine doesn't release their seeds unless it has intense heat like a wildfire. Um, but since uh, the 30, since the 1930s uh, through about 1960s, uh, we really were saying no, no fires, no fires, no fires, because uh, we were starting to see that, hey, that, you know, fires are bad. But then we started to notice, hey, fires can kind of be a good way if it's controlled. Um, and if we do it in certain times of the year or diff or periodically in a, in a time period, and they uh, they notice that that if they if they inc include prescribed burns, help the young jack pine forests, um, then you can get jack pine uh, to emerge out, and the next thing you know, it's you got young jack pine, which then Kirtland warblers will love to nest there. So again, they're very very picky. And because, like, just like the panda, because they're picky, their numbers are dwindled down. So you have, if you're going to have a, a good population, you got to have to be very, very adaptable. Um, and then another reason why another, or, or why an animal could be considered uh, endangered is uh, they could have a lot of conflicts with humans. Predator issue. We talked about the, the wolf earlier on. So wolves were very common. Again, we kicked them out because destroying food sources, habitat, and because we didn't like them, and because we were trying to establish farms, uh, development, and we kicked them out of uh, the state of Ohio. But a lot, the biggest, biggest thing that causes not, a lot of animals, plants to become endangered, extinct, is habitat destruction. I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Habitat destruction, and, and unfortunately, as human populations are growing, um, habitat, uh, we got to come through, we got to convert it to either farmland, development, things like that. Well, we're destroying natural areas for wildlife. And if these wildlife don't adapt uh, to the change, unfortunately, their numbers just keep dwindling down. And there are a lot of other reasons why, but these are just kind of the, the common reasons of why a species could be considered endangered. All right, now we're going to get into the history aspect of the Endangered Species Act. And uh, I just kind of simplified, shortened it down uh, for both the federal and the state level. And uh, here in a little bit, we're going to talk about when the first time the Endangered Species Act was tested. Uh, so, I mean, you can definitely look up on Google and find things more in depth when it comes to the Endangered Species Act. Uh, but again, this is just kind of my own interpretation uh, for this, because I didn't want to talk forever um, about this, uh, this topic. So. All right, so now we're going to talk about the federal history of the Endangered Species Act. 
So Congress passed this act in 1966. Uh, it was basically helping uh, listing native animals, um, species as endangered and giving them limited protection. So the Department of Interior, Agriculture and Defense were to seek to protect listed species. And the act also authorized the service to acquire land as habitat for endangered species. And it almost took six years to modify the law that we have currently as the Endangered Species Act. So that's kind of the shortened, sweet federal history of the endangered species. So now we're going to uh, be talking about the state of Ohio's history of the Endangered Species Act. So our Endangered Species Act in Ohio was adopted in 1973. Um, at that time, uh, included 71 species. But our very first animal that was put on the Endangered Species Act was the bobcats. Uh, a little bit later on in the year, the e Eastern uh, Plains Garter Snake, uh, which is common up in Kidder Plains Wildlife Area, was added a little bit later on. But unfortunately, it just seems year after year, this endangered species list in the state of Ohio gets longer and longer. So now that you have a little brief history lesson of the Endangered Species Act at both a state and federal level, now we're going to go back in time and talk about when the first time the Endangered Species Act was tested in the United States. So back in 1973, the, they were already working down at the Teleco Dam down in the state of Tennessee. And everything was great. Everything was fine. They were actually almost completed with this project. But then we had some fish biologists that started to notice, hey, this snail darter is around the Teleco Dam that's being built. Well, the snail darter was actually put on the endangered species list uh, that same year in 1973. Now we have to remember when this Endangered Species Act was created, it was a pretty powerful law and how it was wrote out, it was supposed to basically stop any kind of project that could hurt this organism um, or its habitat. So, you know, this, this company that was building the Teleco Dam, they're like, you know, we're almost done. They would have to basically destroy the, the rest of, of, of the dam that they built. And uh, it was definitely going to hurt a lot of people um, economically. And so they actually had to take it to the Supreme Court. So what came out of this unique situation? The court ruled that the Tennessee Valley Authority be allowed to proceed because the project was more than 80% complete by the time and halting the project would just waste millions in taxpayer dollars. And on September 5th, 1975, President Carter signed the Energy and Water Development Appropriation Bill. And on November 29th, 1979, the dam was completed and the gates were closed. So also at this time in 1973, uh, there was a Native American uh, law that was supposed to help protect original Native American sites. But because of this new bill, it basically overpowered the Endangered Species Act and this Native American Act. And uh, that's why they were able to complete uh, this project. But again, how the Endangered Species Act was originally uh, wrote, it, it could have stopped this Teleco Dam down in Tennessee. So it's kind of interesting. Something similar kind of could have happened at, uh, in Marion County um, at Marion Tallgrass Trail. A lot of you have been out at Tallgrass Trail. Um, you've uh, either hiked or bike or nature walk, and that's great. Um, so as we were developing Marion Tallgrass Trail, we actually had to work with the Ohio Division of Wildlife because 
they believed during the summer months that the Indiana bat and the northern long-eared bat, which are two endangered species of bats of, in the state of Ohio, and uh, they said, okay, we think they could be here. You can't cut any large trees down. And uh, we were allowed to cut trees during the winter season, but after March 31st, uh, we could not. So what could have happened is if there were trees that we didn't cut down during the winter season, we built, we, as we were building the trail, and the, the, the construction company said, okay, you've got to take this tree down. UDNR says, hey, there's this endangered bat. You can't do that. Again, that could have stopped um, or postponed Marion Tallgrass Trail. But luckily, again, we worked very, very close with the Division of Wildlife with this order, and uh, we were able to complete to the Harding County line. So for all 12.4 miles long. And even currently today, even though we are, we are done building our section in Marion County, again, we are not allowed to uh, cut down any tall uh, standing trees. Um, as, if they're knocked over, we're allowed to, but if they're still standing uh, during those summer months, we still have to leave them alone because the Division Wildlife thinks that, hey, these endangered species of bats could be in this area. So now that we got the history uh, lesson out of the way, now we're going to be talking about some of the endangered species examples in Marion County. Now remember there is, as currently right now, about 122 species that are considered endangered in the state of Ohio. And now we're just again talking about the examples in Marion County. So we're going to talk about the animals. First, we have uh, for our invertebrates a lot of different mollusk species. We can find a lot of our creeks and rivers. And then we have a type of insect, a regal fritillary. And then our vertebrates are creatures with backbones. For our birds, we have a king rail, American bittern, and northern harrier. So for king rail and American bittern, this would be very common in the Big Island wildlife area, so western of Marion County. And the northern harrier, in which, we're, which we're very fortunate during the winter months, uh, we get a lot of local photographers getting some great pictures uh, of them um, in the grassland area. So it is showing that their population is doing pretty decent, at least in Marion County. But Unfortunately, in other parts of Ohio, they are really um, not doing very well. So for reptiles, we have Easter Masaga, or also known as Pygmy Rattlesnake. Uh, this is one of the three venomous snakes that we have in the state of Ohio. Uh, these guys are mainly concentrated in the Kildare Plains wildlife area, but then uh, just uh, that wildlife area is just a slither uh, in Marion County. So up by the Morrow region, this could be a, a spot where you could you could locate this species of snake. And then for our mammals, uh, we have the Indiana bats. Uh, again, we talked about that earlier with that Marion Tallgrass Trail. And also there was the long ear bat. So for plants, uh, we have prairie ironweed and Philadelphia panic grass. So what does Marion County look like when it comes to endangered, threatened, all the different population level categories? So for Marion County, we have 13 that are considered endangered, 13 that are considered threatened, 12 that are considered species of concern, and two that are considered species of interest. And for the species of interest, I put uh, the bullet is Northern Shoveler and Redhead Duck, which uh, are very common at Big Island Wildlife Area. So now that we have learned about the history of the Endangered Species Act and some of the endangered species we have in Marion County, some of you might be wondering, okay, so if I have an endangered species on my property, well, what do I do? Big thing, don't touch them. They're protected, you know, just let nature take its course. But definitely, if you can, um, if especially if it's an animal, get a, a picture, a video, send it to the Ohio Division of Wildlife. Uh, they may bring out uh, wildlife researchers, the wildlife officer, just to examine the situation. Because, you know, the Division of Wildlife wants to really know what's going on with some of the endangered species that's going on in Marion County. 
So now I want to talk about some of the animals that we used to have in Ohio got kicked out, so extirpated, uh, but starting to come back naturally. So reason why some of these animals are coming back naturally, because in especially our neighboring states, their populations are doing so well, they're kind of leaking into Ohio uh, because they're trying to find new homes or new territories, especially with some of our predator species like uh, bobcats and, uh, and black bears. So uh, the one animal I really, really want to talk about is the bobcat. So bobcat is kind of our, our recent poster child that, again, very common in the stage, but then by 1850s, they were extirpated because since they were a predator, we kicked them out. We didn't want them, especially around our farms. And uh, then they noticed in about the 1950s, early 60s, that, hey, bobcats were slowly coming back. They were leaking over from West Virginia. So southeastern Ohio was, was starting to get some of these animals back. And uh, just recently, in 2015, they were just taken off the endangered species list. So this is exciting news uh, because, you know, we had an animal that was once gone, but now is off the endangered list. So uh, that's, that's really, really exciting. Uh, no, we cannot legally hunt or trap bobcats yet in the state of Ohio, but probably in the near future, once their populations increase, to a certain amount, they will probably be able to harvest in selected counties and they will probably become our next fur bearer. So now I want to talk about some of the animals that we used to have, got, then they were extirpated, but then they were reintroduced um, by people or you, from the Division of Wildlife uh, mainly or from other uh, non-government organizations, uh, thanks to uh, conservation efforts or wildlife management. And when you're looking at this list, you're seeing deer and Canada geese. And you're like, I see those animals everywhere. And you're right. But isn't it interesting and kind of funny that at one time in the state of Ohio, deer and geese were considered an endangered species. You know, if we talk to a lot of our older generation, our, 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 the boomer generation, a lot of them probably remember not seeing deer or Canada geese, or at least it was very, very rare. Um, I had a gentleman that visited me at Marion Tallgrass Trail, and he was from the Prospect region. And he told me that in the 1940s, uh, he saw a deer around Prospect, and he was going to call the Marion Star. And uh, he said nobody would believe him because he didn't have a camera. Again, we laugh about that now because now deer and geese are considered a nuisance species, uh, but uh, again, they, they were very, very scarce or very absent in the state of Ohio. So uh, river otters, trumpeter swans, uh, wild turkeys were also another example of animals that we, we reintroduced back into the state. So now we're winding down towards the end of our presentation, and I just uh, want to talk about some of the threats we have today towards our endangered species and even our other organisms that are not considered endangered, uh, things that they have to face. Um, but the big, big thing is habitat loss. Um, it's just unfortunately that is always going to be an issue. And the main drivers for habitat loss is agriculture, land conversion for development, and water development when we make dams or other water uh, diversions. Um, this basically uh, changes the water chemistry and these organisms have to either adapt or move on. So there are other threats as well. Invasive species. Uh, this is a big, big challenge because we're trying to help protect one organism um, for our endangered plant or animal. And the next thing you know, we got an invasive plant or animal or other organism that's not from the area and it's starting to overtake or overcompete against the native wildlife. And this has really caused even some of our uh, organisms that weren't in danger to uh, hurt their population. Uh, this is an example of kutsu that has taken over an entire landscape. Pollution. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of pollution, water, air, light pollution, noise pollution. Um, it's just there's, there's a lot of different forms that's hurting a lot of our organisms. Uh, poaching, um, you know, poaching is probably not as big as it has, um, you know, in the past it was probably definitely really big, but it still occurs uh, today. 
And there are a lot of other things, too, uh, that are considered threats as well. All right, guys, we made it toward the end. I apologize. I know that was a little bit longer video. Um, some videos are going to be long. Some videos are going to be short, just depending on the content. Uh, but some of the recap of what we learned today, uh, the different population level categories. Uh, we also discussed what causes an organism to become endangered, um, history of the Endangered Species Act. We also learned some of the example of some endangered species in Marion County. And we also talked about some of the threats of today with our organisms. So a lot of the information came from the Ohio Division of Wildlife, uh, especially when we were talking about all the different kinds of endangered, threatened, uh, or all the other population level categories in Marion County or the state of Ohio. And a lot of the images came from Google. And uh, this is a link that you can click for a publication that they update usually every year of all the different population level categories of the organisms um, in Ohio. Um, or just go to Google and put Ohio species endangered lists and this will br bring up uh, the same publication. So it's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Uh, unfortunately, the, the numbers get higher and higher. Um, when I first did this program a couple of years ago, the numbers uh, we're, we're down a little bit, but uh, I had to actually update it for this presentation. So hopefully in the near future, we can bring those numbers down. So, so to kind of leave you off, uh, it says, mankind can only disappoint Mother Nature for so long, Anthony Douglas Williams once said. All right, guys. Well, hopefully uh, you can take this in and just appreciate, you know, all the organisms that we do have and we do need to protect them and their habitats. So make sure to go out and explore your Marion County Parks, folks. I'm naturalist James Anderson, and I'll see you next time on Natural Lessons with naturalist James Anderson.